Hey guys, I've been working on this Rev4 Toyota 17? 15. 15 Toyota Rev4. And I'm doing just fluid change basically. And one of the fluids that I'm changing is the transmission fluid. And I thought I'd show you how I do this. Now, I don't have any special equipment, no flush machine, no special check fluid check machine because there are they are available by Toyota because this car doesn't have a dipstick. That's why. So you got to go through a procedure to check the the right level of the actual transmission fluid after you replace it. But who's got time for that? So I thought I'd show you how I do it. So first I'm going to show you quickly what I have done so far. All right, as you can see, that's your transmission, right? From here to the right. Here is the drain plug, which is this guy here. This is a six mil Allen key. After you take this out, then some fluid is gonna come out, maybe half a quart or so. Then you gotta take this guy out. Same, same tool. And you can see it's kind of a, a tube. It's empty inside it's a it's a straw you stick the same tool in the same hole and you take that out and then more fluid will come out basically this thing just stays in there and the fluid is all around it so you know so that would be the level so that that's how much of trans fluid you still have in there before before you take this out and drain it while it's still hot i'll explain why in the in a minute and this here is your fill plug, okay? This is a 24 or an, an 11 or a 15 16. And this is it here. And you got to take this plastic off which sits here. And it's easier, you know, take the wheel off. It makes your life easier. Now, why can't you just take the fluid, you know, drain it, see how much fluid comes out and then uh, put the same amount back in. Well, one reason, and one reason only, is because automatic trans fluid expands when hot. That's why you drain it when hot, so more of it comes out. And because your new fluid is not hot, I mean, literally this thing was, it came in yesterday actually, so about 20 hours ago, that's when I, well, maybe less. Anyway, so I drained it right away. I actually let it sit overnight. And why you, you need to check the fluid once you refill it? Because the fluid, the, the new fluid that you got is not hot. So it's not expanded, if you know what I mean. So this has been draining all night, okay? And let me show you something interesting. It's actually still dripping, but uh, you know, now it's cool to the touch. I'm gonna see actually what kind of temperature we get of the oil pan here. We're at 70, what is it, 75, 75? Yeah, let's call it 75. And this guy here is 74 and a half, 70, exactly the same, okay? And that's the fluid. So since the temperatures of both old and new fluid fluids are the same exactly the same in fact we're not going to check how much of it actually came out overnight during the i'd say maybe 18 hours 17 hours or, or so so this is where we are so get yourself a bucket like this okay so you can be precise now why this is crucial having the right amount of fluid in there because these transmissions and I believe ever since 07 on um, Red Force, Highlanders, Camrys, other automatic Toyota automatic transmissions, including front wheel drive and all wheel drive, it's crucial that you have the right amount of transmission fluid because they're they're basically touchy. If you're overfilled or underfilled, you're gonna have you're gonna have issues, okay? So you know, like, dislike, comment, whatever, whatever, say whatever, whatever you want to say, okay, or take it to a dealer, you know, pay, whatever, do it yourself, 
buy the special tools, do what you gotta do. This is how I do it. And I am gonna, you know, refill it, same amount, exactly the same amount. I'm gonna show you exactly what, I, what I've got and how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna take it for a test drive. I'm gonna show you the result, okay? And if there is too much fluid or too little, the transmi these transmissions make a whiny noise like your low on power steering fluid, like your your power steering pump makes that whine noise, whiny noise when it's low. That's what these transmissions sound like if there's you know not enough or too much fluid in there. So I should know right away if there's an issue. So this is what we got. And I'm gonna tell you something funny you now. Before I left, while it was still hot and dripping, you know, so basically it all came out and in, I don't know, after an hour or so, cause I was doing other stuff to the car, it was still dripping, like drip, 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 you know, not nothing, not a stream, just a drip every second or so. The level was here, just above two quarts. So maybe I'd say two and one third, okay? Overnight, the, another one third came out, or I should say almost. So we're at, you know, it's hard to say, this is not very accurate or uh, not very detailed, I should say. They should have maybe lines going through in between this, these big lines. But anyways, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mark it with a marker and I'm gonna clean this bucket, dump this old fluid out, clean it up and put in the exact amount to the line of new fluid. Then I'm gonna use a pump or whatever you got, refill it through the refill, refill hole and send it. Crazy. One more thing I should mention. The little straw, this is, this tightens up at seven inch pounds. Yeah, inch pounds of torque, seven. That's like, you know, with your pinky, okay? Very, very light, almost nothing. Then the actual plug, I believe it's 29 foot pounds of torque. So much, you know, big difference. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put this, the straw back in, plug it up, refill it, and drive it. And I'll be back once I'm ready to start it. All right, guys, just started. When I had a dead battery, I had to quickly change the battery on the camera. But just now, I had a, a short whine for maybe five seconds or so. And that was it. No, there's no temperature gauge. Where is the temperature gauge on these modern cars? Oh, right there. Never mind. Okay, so as you can see, it's still cold. This plug is back. Still cold. No wine, as you can not hear from the transmission. I'm gonna put the wheel back on and throw it in a gear or two. All right, switching gears. Reverse, neutral, drive. Four, three, two, one. Back to drive, reverse. All right, still gonna drive it. Warmed up a little. I'm gonna bring it down and take it for a short test drive. All right, guys, we're driving. This should be hot by now. Or at uh, operating temperature, which is 105, 110, something around there, Celsius which is 190 in Fahrenheit, I don't know. Do your own research if you wanna, you know, do the checking procedure. It's out there by Toyota. Just gonna drive around a bit, check my work. So I'm just gonna go through the main steps. I'm gonna leave out steps like, you know, undo a drain plug or obvious, obvious steps. So most, number one, 
drain it when it's hot right away as soon as you can remember to take out that little straw that's what's gonna drain out the most of the fluid step number two most important step number two is once you have got a a pan underneath whatever you know, once it's draining leave it overnight make sure you got time make sure the car is level if you don't have a lift like like i do so raise the the ass of, of the vehicle also make sure it's level when i first started to drain it the oil pan of the transmission was hot too, too hot for me to touch for two three hours so it took a long time to cool off perfect quiet as, as it should be next step plug it all up torque it down I believe it's 29 foot-pounds of torque I think the main the fill plug or the, the side plug is 35 maybe but uh, 30 is plenty again remember to put a little straw plug back in then the actual plug the six mil Allen then if you're using now use common use your head guys okay for example if you're using an electric pump like I did prime it first run some fluid the new fluid through it and notice all the lines in the pump is going to be filled with that uh, you know new fluid so when you're done filling it that same amount inside the pump should be still in there right should be still you know primed if you get what I mean so you know you're aiming for the exact amount of new fluid like I said these transmissions can be touchy all right guys this that this is pretty much it um, you know the, the main step is is waiting for it to cool that, that's pretty much it so you can figure out exactly how much came out and that's it so uh, this is my way of doing it probably the cheapest way no need to spend for any money any for any special tools maybe besides the electrical pump if you want to invest in that or have a, uh, a little pump action little you know pump that you screw on the actual bottles but then you would not be able to measure it unless you would pour out so I actually did pour fresh fluid into that measuring bucket I guess you could do that and then uh, pour it back again to, into the bottles you know get be creative okay use your big head all right guys I'm gonna finish up this test drive hope you're having a great day good luck on your maintenance procedure subscribe if this helps you out like the video especially if you have a Subaru and you're uh, working on it I do have a lot of uh, Subaru content and I'm, 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 I am gonna start making these uh, you know short I don't know how long this, this video is going to be by now but I'm gonna try and start making these short repair videos more often all right till next time see ya